Time for attempt number two. Once again, it is late and it is very dark. And once I turn this off, I'll be left completely in the dark except for my emergency lights. But before I do that, let me first flip off all of the 240 volt breakers. All of those are off. And now I will shut off my main breaker and everything in my house should go dark. And it did. Everything except my backup light. So now out to the garage and I will plug in all of my connections to make my backup generator work. I've moved my setup because I have both cars in the garage right now and I'm using different outlets. So I will plug this one into my inverter. And I'll now go inside my house. And here I have an extension cord running to that other circuit. I'm going to plug that into my super meter right here. And then that circuit should be powered up. The circuit does not have a ground fault interrupter on it. It has instead an arc fault interrupter. And that should work just fine. Now for the other circuit, I'll plug that into here. And, and the P3 meter, I'm now going to plug into the other circuit in my garage. The one that I switched out with the non grown fault interrupted circuit breaker. So now I should be ready to turn everything in my house on. And once again, I went through my house and I turned off all of the unnecessary loads, I think. And I'm going to turn the inverter on and see how it works. If we go over here, you can see on my meter that my battery bank is at 12.92 volts. So it's mostly charged, not completely, but mostly charged. So let's see what happens when I turn my inverter on. Hopefully this time it works and doesn't pop or snap or smoke or anything of that nature. It should work, but let's see. And you can see that the light in my garage went on. The lights in my living room are on. Hopefully that's a good thing. Let's uh, take a look at the current that the meter is drawing that the uh, inverter is drawing, rather. Now uh, let me turn on my light in the garage. Which doesn't seem to work for some reason. I'll have to look into that. But uh, let's take a look at what the inverter is drawing. So I'll switch my meter to DC. And it's drawing 34 amps. So that means that I'm drawing about 350 watts. Let's go into the house and see if everything's working like expected. Well, it appears for some reason my arc fault breaker tripped when I turned the inverter on. I don't know why, but after I reset it, everything seems to work fine. So this phase has about 17 watts of draw now that it's on. Let's move over to the other meter and see what that one's drawing. This one you can see is at 115 volts. That's not what I wanted to look at, so let's change over to watts. This one is drawing 270 watts. And you can see that my garage light is on. That's not necessary, so I'll turn that off in a bit. But my battery bank is at 12.4 volts. The fans in my inverter are running. Let's see if the light above my workbench here works. And it does, works just fine. Let's go into the house and make sure that everything else is working. You can see here that the light on my power strip is working. I'll turn my garage heater down. I don't need to use my battery power to heat my garage at the moment. And we'll go into the house in a minute. Here we have the lights in my living room. They work just fine. 
My refrigerator is currently running off of inverter battery power. You can see that everything in here is working just fine. My microwave is on. The time reset because my power reset. My stove does not work. But that's to be expected. That's a 240 volt appliance that will not function. Here, if I start my microwave, That works just fine. Don't want to run it too long because there's nothing in it. Here we are in my bedroom. The light in my bedroom works just fine. The alarm clock's working. Everything in here functions properly. If I go to the bathroom, same thing in here. The lights work. The bathroom fan works. Everything works just fine. So let's sit down and see what's on the TV. Seems that the television works just fine. It's interesting that it's blue on the camera. In person, it's completely black. That's uh, quite interesting. In any case, looks like the uh, television works just fine. So does my DVR. No problems here, I get good, uh, good reception. And I will turn this off, because I don't need to use my battery power to watch terrible television. I'm sure that my computer works just fine. That sort of thing usually works fine on battery power. And if we go over here, I'm currently charging my camera battery. The camera battery charger works just fine. That would not work off of modified sine wave power. Works just fine off of the sine wave power. I'll go into my hallway, and I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but the green light is on in my smoke alarms. These smoke alarms do not work off of modified sine wave, but they work just fine off of sine wave, so that's not a problem. That works. Everything in my house seems to work just fine. No issues whatsoever. And what I think I'm going to do is to just run off of... I'm going to turn my garage lights on here a minute. Now if I can find the switch, there we are, and I do rather like my garage lights. I have six fluorescent tube lights in here, it makes it nice and bright for all sorts of things. That is 600 watts, that's a lot of power, but it works really nicely for what I want to do. So let's try one more time with my 600 watts of garage lights running, and take my meter here, and switch it to DC, zero it out, and see how much power we're drawing. We're drawing, now drawing about uh, 56 amps of battery power, which is less than I'd actually expect. Out of curiosity, let's check one more time and see what each of the phases is doing. We have 417 watts on this particular phase at 115 volts. <clears throat> on the other phase we have 115 volts and only 16 watts. Apparently there isn't a whole lot on that phase, and that's why I had mentioned in the earlier videos, in my particular house almost everything is on one phase, which is why I wanted a 20 amp breaker on that particular phase. So, what I'm going to do, you can see that I've only been running for seven and a half minutes on battery power. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and do whatever I do in my house for the next hour or so, and we'll see how that works. I'll probably go and watch some TV, edit some video, and see how it works out. And here I am in my house, the well-lit house with all of my lights working, my computer running, and I'm looking through my YouTube portfolio here, looking at all my videos. I was going to upload and edit some of the footage that I'm just filming now. 
and you can also see that I do have internet access. I can watch uh, some of my favorite YouTube videos here. This happens to be Eric the Car Guy, as he's telling you. And uh, this, uh, this particular guy has some pretty good car info. If you want to look up some automotive info information, he typically works on Acuras, Hondas, that sort of thing, but uh, it's uh, good general information. In any case, the whole point here is that I do have internet access, which is very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working on my videos here, and we'll uh, take a look at my energy meters and such and see how this works. But right now I'm running off of completely inverter power. My refrigerator and lights and everything else is running off of my battery bank. And it should run for, well, it's a 1000 amp hour battery bank, so it should give me about 10 kilowatt hours of energy. And if I use that sparingly, I don't use any of it for heat or air conditioning or any superfluous uses, it should last me at least a full day. And after that, I can hook up my generator that I built. You can see right here, I have my 12 volt generator charger. And I'll make another video on that later, hooking that up with my battery bank. But in the meantime, let's see how just the battery bank works. If there's a short-term power outage, less than a day, I can just hook up my battery bank and it should work just fine. Looks like it's working right now. If it lasts longer than that, then I can hook up my generator to the battery bank. Run my generator for three or four hours a day and get continuous power 24 hours a day. Alright, I've been running off of battery power for about two hours as you can see here. This particular phase is still only drawing about 15 watts and on the bottom you can see that it's 0 0.03 kilowatt hours. Very low. Let's check the other meter and see how much that one has accumulated over the last two hours. Here is the other phase. That one's currently drawing 90 watts. I shut off most things in anticipation of switching back to regular power here. And if I go to kilowatt hours, I've used about uh, 0.58 kilowatt hours on this phase. So about 0.6 kilowatt hours in the last two hours, or about 300 watts on average. And now I'm going to switch back to regular power. And to do that, I'm just going to unplug this from the wall over here, turn off my inverter, plug both of these, and unplug my meter from the extension cord here. And now that everything is unplugged and shut off, I'll go back down here to the basement and turn my main breaker back on. My test of using this inverter as an emergency backup for my house was successful and you can see here after running my house for about two hours the battery voltage is still just under 12.7 volts so the batteries still have plenty of capacity left however you should never leave a battery partially discharged so what I'm going to do is hook this battery up to my battery charger down here. I have a 45 amp battery charger that I use for most things. It's fully automatic. I can leave it connected indefinitely and I'll make sure that I have negative to negative and positive to positive here. But I'll just hook that thing up, plug it in, and you can see that the battery voltage is going up. I'm sure that it's charging at 45 amps. I could put my clamp meter on that to verify it, but I'm sure that it is, so I'll leave this connected up overnight. I'll charge my battery bank up fully again, and I should be ready for next time that I actually need this setup. So that will conclude this video series. Thanks for watching.